Hello and welcome to your brand new course, Build Responsive Real-World Websites with HTML and CSS. And if this is your very first contact with any coding of HTML or CSS, then let me also welcome you to the exciting world of web development. I'm sure that you're gonna love it. Now, as the name of the course says, this course is all about using the languages of HTML and CSS to build beautiful, responsive, and also real-world website. And so this course basically covers four big topics. Web design, HTML and CSS, of course, and responsive design. And this course is, in my opinion, the very best way of learning all this that you will find anywhere. And so really, you have come to the right place here. Now, before we start learning, let's take a couple of minutes to get a quick overview of how the course is organized and structured and also the projects that we're going to build together. So basically that you know exactly how this course is gonna work. So this course is divided into nine sections with a total of 35 hours of video content. And it starts right here in section one, where you will get a high level overview of web development in general. And you will also build your very first, but extremely simple web page, just to get you excited for what's ahead. Then in section two, we're gonna move to the very basics of the HTML language by building a small project to give you a solid foundation for the rest of the course. After that, in section number three, you're gonna learn the foundations of CSS. So things like styling text, the CSS box model, and sizing and positioning elements. And we will even talk about some developer skills such as reading documentation, and debugging. Moving on, section number four is all about building layouts using CSS. So basically, it's about how to arrange elements on the page in a logical way. And we can do that in multiple ways in CSS, and so we will learn all of them, but actually focus more on modern technologies called Flexbox and CSS Grid. Then in section five, we take a small break from web development and move on to web design. And this is actually a really special section, which could in fact be an entire course on its own. So here I teach you countless easy to use design rules and design guidelines so that you can not only build interfaces, but also know how to make them beautiful and professional looking. And there are actually not many people who are good at development and design at the same time. And so this part of the course is gonna be a great opportunity for you. Next up is section six, where we will learn all about common website components and common layout patterns that many websites out there use. So that then you can build your own websites in the future using these patterns too. And we will do this by looking at a ton of examples and also by building some components with HTML and CSS ourselves. Finally, sections seven, eight and nine are all about building our big course project, which is called Omnifoot. So here we will finally build that beautiful, responsive and real world website that this course is all about. And to do this, you're gonna use all the skills that you have accumulated up until this point, and of course also learn a lot of new stuff, such as how to plan and sketch a website, how to make it responsive, and really how to handle such a big project from start to finish. So just look at this beautiful project right here. By the end of the course, you will be able to design and build something just like this on your own. And that is just amazing, right? Now, besides all this, there are also many coding challenges and also other opportunities for you to practice the HTML and CSS skills that you keep acquiring over the course of this course. Because 
Practicing is actually the single most important thing that you really need to do in order to learn coding. All right, so I hope that you're gonna have a ton of fun with this course now, that you become ready to build your own websites and that you will have a successful start into your web development career. And with that being said, let's now finally get started. Welcome to the first actual lecture of this course. Now there is a good chance that this course is going to be your very first contact with any web development. And so before we start writing HTML and CSS code, I think it might be a good idea to actually begin this course with a very high level overview of this field of web development. So we're going to talk about things like clients and servers, front-end and back-end development, static and dynamic websites, and of course, about the core languages and core technologies of web development. And I'm going to explain all this around the process that happens when we open up a web page in a browser. Just keep in mind, again, that this is just a high-level overview, and so I'm going to leave out a lot of details here. This is really just so you get familiar with some of these concepts and terms that all web developers know before you start your own journey. But anyway, let's say that we're trying to access a web page in our browser at omnifoot.dev. And by the way, this is actually the website that we're going to develop throughout this course. Now, what happens as we try to access this page is that our browser will send a request to the server where this page is hosted on the internet. So each and every website is stored on something called a server, which is basically a computer that is connected to the internet and is able to receive requests like this one. So again, when we browse to a certain website, our web browser will send a request to the server where the website is stored so where it is hosted. Then when the server receives the request, it will take all the files that make up the website and send them back to the browser. And so we say that the server sends a response to the browser, which essentially contains all of these files that the website is made of. Now, as you can see from these file extensions, we have some HTML, CSS, and also JavaScript code here. And these are precisely the three languages that browsers can understand. So what this means is that all of the code that makes up a website needs to always be written in HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. Because again, these are essentially the three core technologies that any browser can understand. All right, now once the browser receives these HTML, CSS and JavaScript files from the server's response, it will take the code and render the website that we were trying to access. So based on that code, okay? And with this, you already have a good understanding of what actually happens when we browse to a website and also about the technologies that we use to build any website. And that process of writing HTML CSS and JavaScript code that the browser can understand is a process that we call front-end web development. So whenever you hear someone talking about front-end development, what they mean is developers writing the code that is displayed in the browser, which is basically the front-end of a website. And in fact, this is essentially what we're going to learn in this course, or at least the very, very fundamentals of front-end development, which is learning HTML and CSS. Now, just as a side note here, whenever the files that make up the website are simply stored on the web server and are then sent to the browser as they are, we say that we have a static website, okay? And this will make a little bit more sense in a minute when we talk about what a dynamic website is. But for now, just keep in mind that a static website 
is basically a website where the files are simply sent from the server to the browser as they are. So without any transformations. All right. So I hope that from this, you learned what front-end development is and also about the three core technologies that make up any website. And so now let's take it one step further and talk about something called back-end development. So let's try another example here. And this time, let's try to understand what would happen when we try to access a website like udemy.com. So once again, the first step is that a request is sent to the web server where udemy.com is hosted. Now, why is a website like Udemy so different from something like the static OmniFood website that I showed you earlier? Well, a complex site like udemy.com is really completely different from a static site because there is a lot of content that is always changing all the time. Like on Udemy, there are always new courses and new reviews being added to the site, new ratings and new course length are calculated, for example, and really a bunch of other things like that are always happening. And so in order to make a system like this work, udemy.com needs a whole application running on the server and they also need a big database, which basically contains all the courses and all the reviews, all the users, and really all the content that is being displayed on their website. Now to do all this, front-end technologies like HTML and CSS are simply not enough. So basically with what you're gonna learn in this course, you're not going to be able to build something like udemy.com, all right? So to write applications that are actually executed on web servers, developers use some kind of backend language like Node.js, PHP, or Python. So what these languages do is to take data out of a database and basically assemble that data into the final files that will then be sent to the browser as the response. And this whole process is called backend development because this is basically the invisible part of a website. And so it's the website's backend. Now in this situation, we say that we have a dynamic website because the website is dynamically assembled from different pieces on the server. And that happens each time that someone visits the website. So returning to the example of udemy.com, in fact, each time that you visit Udemy, a new version of the website is gonna be generated from their database and sent to your browser. Now, on the other hand, if Udemy was a static website, then the website files would already be sitting on the server, just waiting for someone to access them. Okay, so that's the big difference between static and dynamic. In static, the files are already done, and in dynamic, they first need to be generated by an application that is running on the server. All right, but now the rest of the process is actually the same as before. So these files are now ready to be sent to the browser as a response, which will then be converted to the final website like this one we see here of udemy.com. Great. Now, of course, there is no need for you to memorize all these names that I mentioned here, and also no need to deeply understand this process. All I want here is to give you an overview of what front-end and back-end actually are, what the browser and the server are, and also what static and dynamic websites are. Because I really think that this is gonna be extremely helpful as you start your developer journey. But now, just to finish, let's take a closer look at the three languages of the front end. So HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. And starting with HTML, HTML is responsible for the content of the page. So that's the text, the images, the buttons, and really all the content that you see on a web page is always written inside an HTML file. Then the CSS is responsible for the presentation of that content. 
So basically for styling and for laying out the elements on the web page. Now finally, JavaScript is the actual programming language of the front end. So it allows us to add dynamic and interactive effects to web pages. We can also use it to manipulate the content or the CSS, to load data from web servers, and even to build entire front end applications, which we then call web applications. Now we can also use the analogy of nouns, adjectives, and verbs to make the separation of roles here a little bit easier to understand. So in this analogy, HTML represents the nouns. For example, saying that the P element is a paragraph. So paragraph is the noun here. The CSS then is the adjective because it basically describes the noun. For example, like this piece of CSS saying that the paragraph text is red. And so red is the adjective describing the noun. All right. Finally, JavaScript is of course the verb, like saying hide the paragraph. So we're actually doing something here. And so we have a verb. Okay. Does that make sense? All right. And with this, we finish our introduction to web development. And so we're now ready to start working with HTML and CSS code in this course. Now, before we can start writing a single line of code, we first need to install a special tool called a code editor. And the code editor is essentially a special software that allows us to write programming code like HTML and CSS in a very easy way. And since this course is probably your first contact with any coding, in this video, I will guide you through installing the very best code editor in the world. And I will then also show you how to set it up a little bit with some special settings, uh, color themes and extensions. And the code editor that we're going to use in this course is called Visual Studio Code from Microsoft. And as I just said earlier, this is in my opinion and in the opinion of many other developers, the very best code editor for web development in the world. So actually every developer that I know right now uses this code editor. And so you also can't go wrong by using VS code. So to download it, just go to code.visualstudio.com or to make it even easier, you can just Google VS code and it should then be this very first result. Uh, and of course, VS code is available for free and for all platforms out there. So Mac OS, Windows and Linux. And so please just go ahead right now and download the installer for your own system. Then install the program on your computer, just like any other program. And then once you're done doing that, uh, just come back to this video so that we can set up your editor a little bit. Okay, so I hope that you managed to install Visual Studio Code or VS Code as we also call it on your computer. And once you open up the code editor, it should look something like this. And as I said earlier, we will now set up a VS Code a little bit to make it easier for you to follow this course. And we will start by installing uh, an extension. And an extension for VS Code is basically just a small piece of functionality that we can download and which makes the editor a little bit better. So we can basically customize the editor to our needs. So you can think of it a little bit like Google Chrome extensions, for example. So it's the same concept. And the one that we're going to install for now is called Prettier. So just search for Prettier, and then it's probably going to be this first result here, because Prettier is an extremely popular extension. You see, it has, uh, over 12 million downloads right now. And so uh, just go ahead and click install here and then enable it. And probably you will then have to also reload uh, this VS code window. Now what this extension does is to automatically format your code whenever you save it. And this is going to be very important so that your code always looks exactly the same way as the code that I am typing in the video, because 
That way, it will be way easier for you to find any errors or any mistakes that you have in your own code. So it will be easier for you to find and to fix mistakes as you're going through the videos. Okay, and for now, this is actually going to be the only extension that we're gonna install. We will just install uh, some more a bit later in the next section. So now let's come uh, down here to this settings icon, then choose settings from here so that we can now tweak uh, a couple of settings. And let's actually start with two settings that are related to the Prettier extension that we just installed. So just come here to the search bar. So searching for uh, the setting name is actually the easiest way of finding them. So just type here uh, default formatter. And so here we actually need to set it to Prettier. So I already have this set of course, but you will have to uh, go through this list and find Prettier uh, somewhere here. So it is uh, right here. So choose Prettier code formatter and uh, it needs to be this esbnp.prettier vs code. Okay. And so now VS Code knows that it should use that Prettier extension that we just installed to format your code. Now, when should it actually format your code? Well, we need to set another setting for that, which is the format on save setting. So it's this one here. And here you need to check this checkbox so that Prettier will automatically format your file each time that you save it. Okay, another one uh, that is very important is the autosave setting. So autosave, we need to set it to on focus change. And what this will do is to automatically save your files as you go to another tab or as you leave the window completely. And so this is very important so that you never lose your edits and so that you don't have to manually save your files all the time. So set this one to uh, on focus change again. And another one that I like to use, and I'm not sure if this is actually the default already, is to set the tab size to two. And so in this case, this is just again, so that your code looks exactly the same way as my code. So the tab size is basically just the indentation of the code. And you will uh, know what that means a little bit later once we start writing HTML. Okay, and these are the four settings that uh, we need to set. So I think we're good now with the settings. And now finally, uh, let's talk about these colors. So basically we can customize VS Code with a color theme, which will then change the colors of the code editor itself and also of the code. So it will basically highlight different parts of the code with different colors. Now this is uh, just a thing of personal preference so you can just use the theme that already comes automatically by default with VS Code. But I choose uh, to install a special theme that I believe makes it very easy to read the code and so for you to follow this course in an easier way. So a color theme is basically just another extension that we need to install. And this one is called One Monokai. So this very first one here, and as you can see down here, uh, it will give our code these kind of colors. And also the VS Code editor itself will have this blue color that you can see uh, already here in this window. So if you want to use this color theme as well to make your editor look exactly the same as mine, then just go ahead and once again download this extension and then uh, set the color theme using this option here. And you can also experiment with some other themes, of course, uh, down here again in the settings icon. And then here in color theme, uh, you can choose one of these light themes or one of these dark themes. So VS Code already comes with a bunch of themes uh, pre-installed basically. And so you can uh, try them out as well. Or if you have another preference, you can also install any other theme that you would like. Finally, there's just one more small thing, which is these 
a file icon theme. So this doesn't really matter, but I set mine to this option here, so SETI. And so again, if you want your editor to look uh, just like mine, you can also go ahead and choose this option. Okay, and with that, we are done setting up VS Code for now. So now you're actually ready to write your very first line of code. And so that's exactly what we're going to do in the next video. See you there soon. Welcome back. Let's now write our very first line of code and build our very first and very small web page. So here we are back in VS Code and let's now close all of this up. And then we're going here to this first tab. So this Explorer tab. So in VS Code, we always need to be inside of some folder. And that folder is called the project folder. Now, right now we don't have any folder started yet. And so let's actually start by doing that. And I will create a folder right here on my desktop. So basically I will do all the, all the coding will always happen here on my desktop. But of course you can also do it in any other place on your computer. This one doesn't really matter. For me, it's just easier to have it uh, on the desktop. And I'm calling this folder here 01 and test. Okay, so let's go back here and now click on open folder. And so going to my desktop, I will now select this folder that I just created. And so this uh, 01 test is now our project folder. So you see, we get a new welcome screen. And here we can click on new file to add our very first file to the project. Or we could also do this by hovering here over this left sidebar and clicking here on the new file icon. So these are two different ways of creating new files in the project folder. And I actually prefer uh, this one here. So we are about to create our very first web page. And a web page is basically just an HTML file. And let's call it index.html. So it's basically just a file with the HTML file extension. And we are calling it index because that is the default name of the first page of any website. So index is basically always the entry point to any website. And so all web projects always need to have an index.html. All right, so keep that in mind. Always call your very first page index.html. Now, my goal in this lecture is not yet to really teach you HTML. Right now, all I want to do is to create this file and to add a little bit of code to it and then see the result in the browser just so you get to write your first line of code and are able to see the result of writing that code in a real web browser. So again, I'm not really starting to teach HTML just yet. And so instead of writing a whole page structure as we usually need to, we are going to use a small cheat that we can use in VS Code. So to do that, just write an exclamation mark. So just like this, and then you can hit tab on your keyboard or you can also uh, just click here. And with that, we get this very basic and almost empty HTML structure. So it has a head and it has a body. But once again, we will learn all about that a little bit later. For now, all I'm interested here is uh, for now this title of the web page. So let's change the content here of this title to, for example, my first web page. But of course, you can also write something else here. And then let's go inside of the body. So this is actually the part that we will be able to see in the browser. And here, just write this uh, less than sign, then h1, which stands for heading one, and then the greater than symbol. So just like this one here. And you see that then uh, VS Code actually automatically placed this uh, other part here. 
so closing the h1 basically. But again, that doesn't really matter for now. Let's just write some text content in here and I'm writing hello world, which is kind of a standard when you write your very first line of code in any programming language. So hello world is really uh, a long-standing tradition. Next, let's try another one. So again, this less than symbol. Now let's try P, which stands for paragraph. And then again, VS Code automatically closes the paragraph for us. So let's say my name is Jonas, and you will of course use your own name. And this is my very first web page. Okay, now we can give it a save by hitting Command or Control S, or you can go here to the file menu uh, as well. And we also have the autosave active. So if we just leave this tab, so for example, by clicking outside here, then it will also automatically save the file. So let's actually try that. And here we go. So now the file has been saved and maybe you also noticed that the formatting has changed here a little bit. And this happened because of the Prettier extension that we installed in the last video. So remember that the Prettier extension is to format our code automatically whenever we save it. And so that is exactly what just happened. So let's just add some spaces here. And now if I hit Command or Control S again, then you see it put it back in the correct place. All right. And so that's the power of Prettier and it will ensure that your code uh, should always look the same as this code in the video. Great. So we just wrote our very first line of code or actually our first two lines of code. And so now we have this index.html file and we can open it up in a browser. So let's go to our project folder where this file is located. And in my case, remember that's on the desktop. So I can just open it. And now here we have that index.html file that we created previously in VS Code. And to now open it up in Google Chrome or in any other browser, we just need to double click the file or we can just also right click it and then open with uh, Google Chrome. So let's do that. And here it is. Here is our very first web page that we just created manually in VS Code. Great. And that's really amazing if you ask me. So congratulations and well done on your very first web page here. Let's just uh, push it to the side here a little bit and then VS Code to the other side. So from now on, we will always have or code here on the left side and then on the right side the browser so that we can see our changes. And to give us a bit more space here, we can uh, again click on this tab here and that will then collapse this sidebar and give us more space for our actual code. So you see that here we have this hello world uh, in big and bold text and so that corresponds here to this h1 uh, element and then Below that, we have this paragraph, which is uh, translated here into this visual element. We also have the actual title of the page here uh, in the title of this tab. So my first web page is what we have here. And that is exactly what we typed here into the title element, right? And so one more time, the code that we wrote here in our HTML document is now reflected in the real world in this real web browser. And speaking of the web browser, I'm using Google Chrome to test all the code that we're gonna write throughout this course. And so I really advise you to also use Google Chrome to always test the code that you are writing. So that will again ensure that you have the exact same results as you are seeing in the course videos. Okay, and this is actually enough for this very first coding video. And I hope that you really got the ideas that I wanted to show you in this lecture. So basically starting from creating a project folder, then opening up that project folder in VS Code. So 
in this folder here, the test folder, then inside of that, creating an HTML file, then adding some code to that file, and finally opening up the HTML document in a real browser, such as Google Chrome, where we then see this result. So basically the translation of our code to a visual result. So I hope that you had some fun doing this and I see you in the next video. Now, one of the things that you need in order to go through this course is to get access to some starter files for each of the sections in this course. And so in this video, let me very quickly show you how you can access those files. So the entire starter files, as well as the final files for each of the sections of the course are hosted in this so-called repository on GitHub. And GitHub is basically a code platform where most developers upload their code to in order to share it or to collaborate with other developers or simply to store it. So a repository is basically a folder which contains a bunch of code or other files. And each repository can be accessed by a URL. And this repository is available on this URL here. But don't worry, you don't have to type that in. So I included this link uh, in this lecture on Udemy and it should also be in the very first text lecture of this section. So I'm sure that you can find this link here, so this URL, somewhere uh, in this lecture. So just click that and then you will uh, end up on this exact same repository. So in this repository, as I mentioned, we have all the starter files and for each uh, of the sections of the course, there is one folder. For example, the next section, which are the HTML fundamentals, contains all of these images and also this text document. Okay. I also included the final code for each of the sections so that you can always compare your own code to the code that I'm writing in the videos. And this will be very important so that you can compare your code to mine in case that you have any mistakes in your code. So comparing your code to mine like this will always be your easiest way of finding mistakes, so of finding errors that you are maybe typing in your code. And that will happen for sure. It happens to all beginners. And so in that situation, you can just get access to the final code. Finally, down here, there is also this written document, which contains these most frequently asked questions. So before actually starting the course, it might be a good idea to quickly read through these questions. That should only take you like three minutes, but I'm sure it will help you clear some doubts that you might get as you go through the course. But anyway, what we really came here to is to actually get access to the code, right? And so uh, to download this code, all we have to do is to click here on this green button and then down here, choosing the download zip option. And now this should probably take some time because there are a lot of images here. And so let's just wait for this download to finish. Okay, and that uh, download just finished. Now let's go back to the desktop or wherever you are working. And then let's simply put uh, those files that we just downloaded there. All right. So then we need to uh, extract this zip archive. And on a Mac, you just have to double click that file. And on Windows, you just right click and then extract all. Okay. So we don't need that anymore. And now let's quickly open up this folder just so we can see that it is indeed the exact same uh, files that we just saw on GitHub. So we have the starter files and here the files for the next section and then also the final files. And so now with these starter files in place, we are actually ready to start learning HTML in the next section. Now, before leaving this getting started section, 
let me give you eight quick considerations on how to actually take this course. And I promise that they are super short and super important. So please, please don't skip this video. It will set you up for success with this course. So to start, chances are that this is your very first contact with writing code. And so please don't get overwhelmed. I have literally seen tens of thousands of students going through this course or one of my other courses. And I can tell you that it's 100% normal that in the beginning, you will not really understand everything. So just keep going through these first few sections, even if you don't understand 100% at first. You will very soon, believe me, that's just normal. Just don't think something like, I guess coding is not for me. So that thought is simply not allowed here. Also keep in mind that everyone has different learning speeds and so you will get there eventually. Just keep following the course and keep practicing as much as you can. Now about actually taking the course, you always, always need to code along with me. And this is absolutely fundamental. You will learn exactly zero HTML and CSS skills by simply sitting there and watching me code. So you really have to actually write the code yourself, even if you're just typing the exact same words as I am typing basically in the video. But it really doesn't matter. As long as you're coding, the code is getting into your brain and you're learning. And so that's all that matters. If you want the course material to stick in your brain even better, then take notes. So notes on code syntax, notes on theory concepts, and really notes on everything. You can't take too many notes. Now everyone has their own style, so just find your own one. Next, try all the coding challenges that I present you. Try to do the best that you can, but if you get stuck for too long for some reason, just go ahead and watch the solution. So again, you have to try the coding challenges. Otherwise, you will miss a lot of the learning opportunity here. And also, don't beat yourself up if you can't figure out the solution. Again, this is completely normal, especially if you're just a beginner. Trust me. So if that happens, just rewatch the lectures that were covered in that challenge, try to understand them a bit better, and then move on. Now, the sections in the course build on one another. And so before moving on from a section to the next one, really make sure that you understand exactly what was covered in that section. So take a break, review the code that we wrote, review your notes, and also review the projects that we built in that section, uh, if there was any. You should even try to come up with your own examples and write some code on your own in order to practice. And only then you are really ready to move on to the next section. Now, if you have a question or an error in your code, always start by trying to solve the error by yourself. This is absolutely essential for your progress and your learning journey, because one of the main things that a developer has to do is to find and fix errors, or bugs, as we also call them. Now, if you can't solve the problem, then go ahead and check out the Q&A section here on Udemy, because probably someone else already had the same problem before. If that also doesn't help, then of course you can ask a new question. To do that, use a short description, post your code on codepen.io and share the link in the Q&A. So don't just paste a wall of code into the Q&A, but instead please use a service uh, such as codepen.io. Next, I just wanted to quickly mention that I recorded this course on a Mac but everything is going to work the exact same way on Windows or on Linux. So if something doesn't work on your computer, 
it's not because you're using a different operating system, okay? And now, finally, and you could say even most importantly, have fun while doing this course. Coding is a lot of fun, and it's so rewarding to see something that you have built yourself. So if for some reason you're feeling frustrated, then just stop whatever you're doing and come back later. So again, you always need to have fun while coding. And with all this being said, let's now finally get started.